Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. If I have to recollect most commonly asked questions on the channel, this question, DevOps engineering versus cloud engineering would definitely be one of them. In fact, I answered this question a lot of times on the live stream, but there is no dedicated video on the channel and a lot of people start their journey into DevOps and cloud every day. So I thought I'll make a dedicated video on this and clear it once for all. What is the difference between DevOps engineering and cloud engineering? Especially if you are starting your journey today, which path should you take? Should you start with learning DevOps or should you start with learning any cloud platform? Make sure you watch this video till the end because there is a lot of misinformation and wrong guidance on the internet. Let's get started. First of all, let me ask you a simple question. What exactly is cloud? It can be AWS, it can be Azure, or it can be GCP. They are more or less offering services. For example, if you want to create a virtual machine on these platforms, you just head to these services. On AWS, it's EC2. On Google Cloud Platform, it's their Compute Engine API. On Azure, it's their Virtual Machine Service or the resource. Similarly, if you want to spin up a Kubernetes cluster, you just go to their services. Again, on AWS, it's EKS. On Azure, it's AKS. And on Google Cloud Platform, it's GKE. Now, people find it very convenient to just head to these services, click few buttons through the user interface and spin up a virtual machine or in this case to spin up a Kubernetes cluster. But honestly, if you don't understand what is a virtual machine, if you don't understand what is Kubernetes, if you don't understand what is networking, there is absolutely no way you can understand how to use these services. Of course, you get a Kubernetes cluster, but what will you do with that Kubernetes cluster? Tomorrow, if there is any issue on the spin up Kubernetes cluster, how will you fix that issue? How do you deploy the resources to that created services, right? So all you need to do is to start with the fundamentals. Once again, it is very, very convenient to start with cloud, but it's a wrong way to start your journey. Because cloud platforms offer services or manage services through which you can create the resources that you are looking for. But once you create those resources, end of the day, you have to manage those resources for which you need to understand those concepts. Imagine you just go to a cloud platform, any of these cloud platforms, within three, four clicks, you can create VPC. But if you don't understand the concept of networking, it is going to make your life very, very difficult because within networking, there is DNS, there is CIDR, there is subnet, there is firewall, API gateway, load balancer. You should understand these concepts first. At least you should understand the important concepts in it first. Only then you have to get to VPC. Right? So going back, start your journey with DevOps. Now, DevOps is a thing that will help you learn fundamentals like Linux, right? So when I say start your journey with DevOps, that means first start understanding Linux. If you are using a Windows machine today, don't get to a cloud platform. Install WSL on your Windows machine. Creating a cloud account is a shortcut. Creating or setting up WSL is the actual path. If you're on Mac OS, you don't even need it, right? Once you create WSL, start playing with it. Create a Ubuntu instance on your Windows subsystem for Linux. And on this Ubuntu instance, start playing with it. Like start creating files, start creating folders, SSH to it. Maybe learn shell scripting on it. Then once you're done with it, learn Git then maybe you should be learning Docker, 
No, I'm not going with the exact roadmap. You can check my 2025 DevOps roadmap. Everything is covered as part of it. But what I'm trying to say is today, if you have a laptop, you can technically do everything on the laptop without getting to a cloud platform. You can install Docker on your machine. You can install Kubernetes on your machine. There are a lot of local Kubernetes distributions. It can be Minikube. It can be micro k It can be Kind. It can be K3S, K3D. You can spin up a Kubernetes cluster in multiple ways today. And almost all the features of Kubernetes works on your local machine. There are few exceptions, but that's totally fine. You can learn 90% of Kubernetes only on your local machine. Okay, then probably if you want to learn observability, you can set up everything on your local machine. And once you are clear with the fundamentals, then go to the cloud platform for the convenience. <laughs> but Abhishek, why should I learn cloud? Because, you know, if I can learn everything on my laptop, what is the purpose of learning cloud? Today, if you join an organization, 90% of the organizations, there is certain cloud repatriation, that is, Certain companies are moving from cloud back to on-premises, but still 90% of companies, especially startups and mid-scale companies prefer cloud because it significantly reduces the maintenance. If some company has to maintain their own servers, they have to set up data centers. They have to ensure these data centers are maintained. They need to build a system administration team to properly patch the servers on the data centers, which is a huge effort for startups and mid-scale companies. So these companies, it's a no-brainer for them. They just start their journey with the cloud platform, both to reduce the maintenance, also the cost. So once you clear the fundamentals, once you understand everything, pick up a cloud platform according to the country that you are in, where just see which cloud platform has the most number of opportunities in terms of jobs and pick up a cloud platform. It can be AWS, Azure or GCP. Don't go with other cloud platforms. And the way you learn DevOps, follow the same order to learn the cloud platform as well. For example, you started with Linux, start with creating an EC2 instance maybe, or start with IAM to understand how to create users, how to manage access, then go with Linux, create an EC2 instance, then go with networking, understand how networking, networking is managed on these cloud platforms, right? It's very interesting to understand how cloud operates these services, but you only understand them perfect if you know the fundamentals back. You only understand a public subnet in AWS if you know the concept of public subnet. You only understand the concept of load balancer if you know how load balancer works, right? So the summary of it, or a, in a nutshell, always start your journey with DevOps. Don't start with cloud. You will keep clicking few buttons. You will keep getting those resources. Probably you can even log into those resources. But what happens next is DevOps engineering. On cloud, you have more responsibilities for sure. For example, you have to take care of cloud cost optimization. You have to take care of compliance. You have to take care of security for your organization. These are additional responsibilities. So I will conclude this video by sharing my roadmap. If you want to follow my roadmap and succeed in DevOps, start with DevOps. If you are interested, we have DevOps zero to hero. We also have Linux zero to hero. If you are a complete beginner, you can start with that. Then go with AWS, Azure, or GCP Zero to Hero. We have all the three playlists. On GCP, four videos are remaining. Then go with Terraform Zero to Hero so that you know how to automate your cloud infrastructure and maintain the cloud infrastructure in a robust way. Finally, go with Python Zero to Hero. Of course, we have a lot of other playlists like Observability Zero to Hero, AI for DevOps, but these are the ones that you need to focus on if you want to clear a DevOps engineering position in 2025. In some companies, you might find the role as DevOps engineer. In some companies, you might find the role as a cloud engineer. 
don't worry about it no end of the day whether it's a cloud engineer position or whether it's a devops engineer position look at the job description you will find the same points you will see companies calling it as devops engineer but they have aws in the job description you will see positions opened by company as cloud engineer but within that you will find networking you will find deep understanding of kubernetes you know if you are creating eks cluster you don't need deep understanding of kubernetes right you don't need deep understanding of control plane and manage plane because today eks auto mode can do everything for you but why do they have that in job description because as i told you whether it is devops or whether it is cloud the underlying points in the job description are almost the same i hope this video cleared the confusion if you still have any questions do let me know in the comment section see you all in the next one take care bye bye everyone